in this problem, I'm going to graph the function f of x equals 3 to the x power. This is an exponential function. Then we will graph its inverse and find the domain and range of each, the function and its inverse. I'm going to use the values that they gave me. You can use other values if you want, but we're going to use x equals negative 2 through positive 2, which is in the chart. What I'm doing is I'm replacing every x in the function with negative 2, negative 1, etc. So instead of 3 to the x, I have 3 to the negative 2, 3 to the negative 1, and so on. Now we simplify. You do not need a calculator for this. When you see a negative exponent, please don't be alarmed. A negative exponent indicates that we are finding the reciprocal of the base. In other words, just flip the base. Right now the base is 3 or 3 over 1. So if I were to flip it, it would become 1 over 3. So that's how you can apply negative exponents. So as you can see, 3 to the negative 2 is really just 1 third squared. 3 to the negative 1 is just 1 third to the positive 1 power. So once you apply the negative by flipping it, the exponent becomes positive. And now we just simplify these values. So 1 third squared is 1 ninth. 1 third to the first is 1. 3 to the 0 power is 1, because anything to the 0 power is 1. 3 to the first is 3. 3 squared is 9. So now you just plot these points on your graph. And that's what this exponential function would look like. This is an exponential growth function, because the number 3, our base, is greater than 1. Next thing we're going to do is graph the inverse. Now you can figure out the inverse function and then plug in points, or if you know what an inverse is, there's a quicker way to do this. All you have to do is switch your x's and your y's. So the x row becomes y's and vice versa. So you can see that I just switched the x's and y's in every one of my points. So instead of negative 2 comma 1 ninth, I'm going to have 1 ninth comma negative 2. So I did that all down the row. So if I were to plot all of those points, this is what the graph is going to look like. Next thing we're going to talk about is the domain and range of each of these functions. So starting with f of x, which is the blue one, the original f of x equals 3 to the x. Domain is all of your x values. If you look at the graph, it's all x values from left to right. So on that blue graph, you can see that nothing is going to stop that from going to the left or the right. Another way to think about it is, since domain is your x values, you can try to figure out, are there any x values that I'm not allowed to plug in? You have no x, x values that are off limits, though. So the domain would be all real numbers, negative infinity to positive infinity. There are no limits to your x values. That graph is going to go for forever to the left and forever to the right. Again, I'm looking at the original graph only, not the inverse, the original one, the blue one. Range, however, is not all real numbers. With exponential functions, you have to be careful of what we call an asymptote. An asymptote is a line, it's an imaginary line, that the graph will get very close to, but never actually touch. So if you look at this graph, you'll notice that when I connected the points, I never had them actually touch the x-axis. It may look like they do, but I didn't mean for them to. You could zoom in as far as you want, and this 
function will never go past the x-axis. The reason for that is you could plug in the smallest x value you could think of. You can plug in negative a thousand, negative a million. Your calculator may not be able to handle it, but you can plug in a very, very, very small x value. So let's say you plug in negative 50. If you do 3 to the negative 50 power in your calculator, you get a really, really, really small number, but it's not zero and it's not negative. So what's happening is you will never have any y values that equal zero or below because that graph will never get past that x-axis. It'll never be down here ever. It stops at that x-axis. So with that said, your range is all of your y values from least to greatest. The smallest is really, really, really small, but it never touches zero. And then it does go up forever. So as you can see, I wrote the range as zero to infinity and I used parentheses. When you put the parentheses next to zero, you're saying that it's going to get as close to zero with pos as possible without actually equaling zero. So hopefully you were able to follow some of that. I'm going to do the same thing for the inverse, which is the black curve. Now, we actually don't have to do any work for this because if you understand inverses, you know that x and y switch, which means domain and range switch. I will briefly explain it, though. If you look at the graph, domain is left to right, so now I'm looking at that, um, that black function, the one that's farther on the right-hand side. Your domain starts just after zero. You can see that I don't have it going across the y-axis. Okay, there's like a barrier right there. It doesn't start until you just get past that y-axis, but then it goes to the right forever. So the domain would be from zero to infinity, not including zero. And you can see that that was the range of the original. Now for the range, that goes from bottom to top, from least to greatest, all of your y values. Nothing is going to stop this at the bottom or the top. So it's negative infinity to positive infinity, which matches the domain of the original. So if a lot of that didn't make any sense, as long as you know the domain and range of one of them, just switch them and you'll know the domain and range of the other. Now there is one more thing I wanna show you and that's how to actually find the inverse of the function f of x equals three to the x. When you find the inverse, you are switching x and y. So I'm gonna start with that. Now this is actually really easy to do. There is one step in solving for y. Right now, I have exponential form in front of me. Since math is magic, in one step, I can convert this to log form, and I'll have solved for y. 3 is the base of the exponent. What I'm going to do is move it to the other side so that it becomes the base of a log and write this in log form. So just like that, we have our inverse.